That's a lot of stun. That's a lot of control. I still don't think it's going to be enough. I got to give my prediction for the Prediction King. Going TNC. I uh, closed my eyes. And you know when you get those, like, colors in your eyes when you close them? Yeah. It came up orange. The colors were orange. I read into that. And that will apparently mean that TNC will win. And, uh... Yeah. I mean, if you guys don't believe me, close your eyes. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. Yeah, exactly. Come on, guys. So, game number three, T1 TNC. This is a big game for TNC. You've got T1 who are two and one. You've got TNC who are one and two. If TNC win this, T1, Boom, and TNC are all two and two. It's very important for TNC and TNC fans alike that they do take this one. But that being said, same thing really for T1 because then they'd be three and one. They'd really split themselves from the rest of the pack. They move into second over Fnatic. Could be a very uh, big moment for both these teams that you remember looking back on the season when we get into like that week five, that week six, how close it could have been. Even a master falters. I don't know. I like this DPC season, you yeah. know, just the build up uh, towards a major and uh, can't believe we're going to actually have teams from different regions playing, playing against each other. each other. It's been forever. At that. Singapore major. It's yeah. It's going to be fun. For sure. Like, Dota should be great again. No regions against regions. We're going to have a major winners. Only two major, however. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, let's check this game. Armel on Ember Spirit on a mid lane against the Pagna. Pagna starting with the Nether Blast. Armel going for that slight, enough. securing a creep and possibly dodge that. Blast from Pagna. So far, there are three heroes on the top lane, just getting a bit uh, more farm to the Underlord and the Tims. Dragging Ooh, the Zephyr. creep wave back. Taking a lot of damage over bottom of the Thunderstrike and the right clicks from the Metamorphosis from Gabby. Ooh, just surviving. By the way, I just want to mention, I know they were asking on the panel, what's your favorite interaction with Soulbind? Mine is if you've got Shard as Pugna, and then you life drain from the soulbound units, it'll split both of them onto two more units if they're close enough. And then split again. It's kind of crazy. Say that again? I was just reading the shard. For every 175 seconds of channel, another secondary life drain is created targeting another target. random enemy hero. Yeah. So it so splits every 1.75, but if you've, I'm pretty sure if you've got it soulbind, and you, you can have four two, sucks. It'll split again, and then split again. If you, it's if like you unlimited that. splits. You tested uh, it. Oh, I tested it, or a friend of ours tested it, uh, and he had like ten axes, soulbind, life drain, and every one of them got hit by the end of the duration. All right, I want to see this, Pagna. <laughs> if you're listening, I call it the ultimate suck. It's really just the uh, the the best soulbind in my opinion, if they can pull it off. Yeah, Black is like, yeah, you know, Doom, we're going to go with that one. Pretty standard <laughs> stuff. One. Couldn't think of anything else. But Roar is good. Like yeah, Roar is very good. Roar is good. Gabby doing fine on the bottom lane. 12 CS. Has a fluffy hat going towards the Falcon Blade. Some mana region, some damage, a bit of a HP on top of that. Mm -hmm. Not too bad enough of an item for a TB. Again, Falcon Blade... Uh... It's just one of those items, again, doesn't really build in anything else. Is it just a slot taker? Is it worth the gold? TB builds, like, expensive items. You get Scotty, you get SNY, most likely. Uh, Manta style is also fine here to get rid of the some stuff. Like, uh, you kill Phantom pretty quickly with the Manta. And get out of the Frostbite, remove the slows. So it could be pretty good. Remove the Cripify. So Falcon Blade is going to be in the inventory for a very long time. So we'll see how quickly he can get that. Meanwhile, Carl sitting top of the CS at the current moment, 17 and 5. Ember only 11 and 4. So a bit one-sided. A lot of damage coming through onto the Disruptor. But Febby survives. Gabby into that Metamorphosis once again. 
trying to secure some CS, doing a good job so far. And Armel sitting at about uh, close to half health at the moment with that bottle. Has one more Sith ready to go in that flame guard. But again, Carl just maintaining a, a good position on the CS. Gabby, though, getting chased down. And now they're under the tier one tower. They'll get first blood. Zephyr combines with Cuckoo to get this kill onto the Terror Blade. It's really not Whoa. worth it because, like, Big Way was pushing in. Uh, Fabi just decides to ditch. Radiant secures the mid rune. I think in this situation, you're yeah. fine with uh, having one position four moving Radiant to one side, awesome. trying to secure their bounty rune, uh, sorry, rune for your mid laner, and Ember Spirit can check the bottom <laughs> rune. Glimpse back, but not really going to matter much. Uh, Femi's working here with not a lot of health from mana now. Yeah, that was during metamorphosis like that was really bad the tb goes down in that situation now he lost so much a lot of xp a lot of cs still doing uh, okay 21 we didn't talk about the underlord he is the king of this game playing in the phantom assassin early on you just don't care kp we see that quite often these days in both southeast asia and chinese region off laners just getting that bottle so much value you get from it refill from the bounty runes and uh, yeah Underlord, like you drag the creep wave to the side, which means he's just gonna get more farm from that firestorm. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So Cuckoo controlling this lane, Terror Blade. Level four at this point, but not expecting so much more just yet. Let's see. Over mid again, decrepify onto the ember, level six for Carl. Now we just wait. Till he gets the shard and we get the soul bind. Just have to wait 15 more minutes. Yeah. If you wait, it'll potentially come. Oh, Fabi looks pretty dead. Yeah, he's trying to run away. Glimpse back, get some distance. Oh, the Crystal Nova. One more right click. It is enough. Zephyr taking out Fabi. So now they have a kill on both these heroes bottom. It's just too much slow, too much damage. Whenever TB does not have meta, they can't play aggressive. They can get a kill. Once meta is up, Gabby will be able to farm, put some pressure on the heroes. This is not the best lane so far for TNC bottom. Where, where are their... Like, where they're at right now, is this okay for them? Is this enough for what they're getting? Or is it really starting to favor T1? Once this meta is gone, uh, Gabby needs to be in the jungle. Like, there's just going to be too much pressure when he's in melee mode. Beastmaster getting closer to level 6. Possible rotations from your mid laner. Pagna trying to put some more pressure on a mid tower. You asked, like, what's the situation like for them? Top lane's going well. Uh, Underworld getting a, a lot of free farm. TB's still doing okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I just don't think he should be in the lane anymore. Mm -hmm. Just go back to the jungle. They need to be careful about their mid, too. Carl's putting the pressure on with that Nether Blast, just knocking out so much health on this tower when he's given the opportunity to do so. If you lose that mid tier one quickly, it opens up the map for T1. You can see already some wards around the jungle. Zephyr picking up a, another. Just trying to attack. keep that vision, do what he can. And so far, so good for both teams. I think it's pretty close. Radiant but you need to be very careful on Gabby if he gets caught out again. That could be a big problem. And Has one point Jackie's in Sunder available, but uh, he's just going to die. That's why I said he needs to be in the jungle, because yeah. this type of rotation T1 did in a game with the Raid King, where they just uh, TP from the top lane, put the pressure on the enemy safe lane. Uh, kind of standard stuff. I saw Gabby going to the jungle, then going back to the lane, a bit greedy. But, uh, okay, mid lane, Tame's just going to drop Carl with a full combo on him. 5-0, man. TNC, they're, they're kind of... Looking weak in the laning stage, uh, like decision making wise, what needs to be done is still not like top notch. Radiant structures are fortified. So they they kind of flounder in the laning stage, and it, it's been a bit of a struggle. Carl gets smoked before he makes the move up towards top. He's also in viz. 
Inkswell life drain onto the Underlord. He's stunned and killed. Carl with another one. He is rotating, making his presence felt and from an even game to a 2K lead. But here comes TNC. They'll stick with Carl for a second, but the silence for the Phantom's embrace of Whitemon keeps this Pugna alive. And it looks like Whitemon will die for the first kill for TNC. They'll also get the tower up in the top lane, but they don't get the Pugna, which is what they really, really wanted. And so T1 are happy to give up their support, as well as the fact that they just blow up Gabby. Wow. Man, Gabby's not having a game. Already died three times, nine minutes in on a TV. It's just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Should have been in a triangle instead. Maybe send Illusion, try to get the last hit with it. Amber puts the pressure. Amber's the one guy that uh, can't really be caught by their heroes. Unless they use a silence, they already killed the Grimstroke. So TB once again, TPing top. Roar. Roar. Can they save this Ember? So far, so good in the save situation, but do they come back and get any kills out of this? Febby comes in, Thunderstrike on Carl, glimpse back, not really that close, and Armel just blows up. He tries to get something done, but they're playing with fire, and well, his fire goes out. This is eight to one, and complete and utter devastation right now for T1. There's a big difference to what the TB has and what the Phantom Assassin have at the moment. So it's just almost full Battle Fury on a Phantom Assassin while your TB has a Falcon Blade. Really not, uh... Can't really compare these two items. Yeah, it's not even close. It's night and day at the moment. You look at where the PA is, 1100 gold ahead. It's just such a, a big bump since it felt like it was kind of close and then they came bottom and just took Gabby's life. Oh, I do that? They're looking for Armel again. TNC kind of seem a little lost from the, you know, all the pressure that's coming in. A little lost? Ugh, man, TB can't catch a break. Uh, he needs a map right now. He needs a way to find, him, find his path back into this. Trying to do what he can. He's got 800 gold just about saved up. And that's 11 minute Battle Fury, Magic Wand, Phantom Assassin. Wow. So pretty good timing. I don't see any ancient stacks so far, but uh, you know, should be all right. They were more focusing on the lanes from T1. Smoke from TNC, and they'll find a Crystal Maiden. And they even get this kill, Freezing Field, that gets used. Armel now out of mana. There was a TP, both top and to the outpost, both get stopped. It's actually a four times spree that goes towards Armel. And they are pressuring the tier two tower with these creeps, but not adding to the pressure. Phantom's Embrace and... Oh God. Phantom's Embrace, Life Drain with the Nether Blast all coming in while Decrepified. It seems like no hero on TNC can survive that for the moment. There's just so much damage coming out from Pugna. T1 should use their advantage, what they have right now. Their heroes feel really, really strong. Like Leash Mechanic against Pango is going to be great. Against the Ember Spirit, Gabby. Smoke oh, into triangle, they know which Gabby one is real. Up. Phantom's Embrace on the run, back to form, life drain in, and he'll Sunder, he Sunder Zephyr, so he'll survive this one. We'll try to get in and turn this one around. There's the Remnant forward, Armel, Sight of Fist, they get the kill on a Zephyr, Primal War is used, onto the Pangolier, but Beastmaster caught away from his uh, team. Rest of the team, Knight there to follow and it up. Feby. They still, still get a kill on Febby, so that's okay-ish, lost a bit of a, an advantage that they had. This Grimstroke, Phantom's Embrace, plus Pugna's Decrypify is such a strong combination. The reason why we see mid Grimstrokes going for that Ethereal Blade is you cannot attack the Phantom. So yeah. you can't get rid of that. At the end, you're gonna get that high rend damage. But that, that's a decent fight for TNC. They do lose Fabi, would've been nice if they lost nothing, but Gabby stays alive. And, you know, Ember helps to get a couple of kills. They bump up that net worth a little bit. They're starting to fight their way back in. They Problem still need is, a lot of time, though. Jackie's untouched. Yeah. Jackie's just king of the jungle right now. Farming, 
not being contested at all. And uh, yeah, again, lane being pushed in on the bottom. So pretty free game for Phantom Assassin. This might help though. Brada Beto's for the Underlord. That with Pit of Malice is a good bit of control if you can keep them there. Manta being built by the Terror Blade and has, uh, has himself about 6k on the net worth. Their so tower defense is pretty good. Like yeah. just a combination of TNC's heroes, Pit of Malice, you have that Road of Athos. Kinetic field, like Firestorm alone can pretty much deal the most damage in a team fight if they use. And you also want to max out those spells. You want to max out Glimpse first, then put more points in Kinetic field. I want to see Pit of Malice maxed out straight away. Yeah, once you get this Rod of Atos, max the Pit of Malice. Dyer. Have that disabled duration up there and have it work with the Rod of Atos. We'll see. They've smoked up. They're coming around looking for the Phantom Assassin. This is a kill they need Radiant to take. Spamming. And, ooh, Phantom Assassin. Remnant. They're right by the PA. Blink Strike away. Do they have the distance to cover? They've got a Remnant. Searing Chains. Now, Static Storm. Everything used to get Jackie. Finally, something going the way of TNC with a big kill like that. This gives some time to TB to be controlling the top part of the jungle. Great kill on the Phantom Assassin. Still a bit worried about the Roshan, where T1 gets like a kill or two, transition that into Roche. PA picks it up. They continue to snowball. Ton of damage on the towers. Beastmaster Necrobook 3 about to be finished. And the PA, yeah, she's going into death, so it seems. So going into the Deso, now TB making up a lot of ground. Half the distance of an old Diorb away from finishing the Manta. BKB from Ember. So I believe he's finished off a Maelstrom, yeah. KP bottom, Cuckoo coming in, Dark Rift trying to escape, get a Malice. Roots him, freezing field, just won't have the damage. Not even close. No. Just a little scratch. Tis just a scratch. Blink dagger for the Grimstroke. It's gonna be a lot of gold to save up as a. Yeah, five just needs uh, two thousand gold to buy a blink <laughs> dagger. <laughs> Easy gold for a five. Mixing things up, two, 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 one build. This is when all your spells are good. You're playing five, and uh, you know you can't decide what you want to go for. I'd still prefer if he gets like one point in Phantom's Embrace, so you need three hits to kill it, and then max out the Ink Swall. So they're pressuring bottom. We'll see what he focuses on. Can't on see its tower defense is pretty good. Just Firestorm, Slide of Fist. So something T1 needs to be careful about. And TNC, they're recovering. Like, yeah. uh, you can see the gold advantage. At one point, it was 4K. Now it's down to 1K, closer to 2K, but uh, They've got oh the on it Gabby. keeps changing. He's recovered. He's sitting second on the net worth. He had such a tough early game. We see this kind of a lot. These carries just having a tough laning phase, and they're allowed to recover. And I say allowed because seems like these teams just kind of put their pressure elsewhere and then the other position one ends up having time to just farm your back into the game. Your team needs to make some space, you put down the ward so your carry can farm, you know he's had a lot of trouble in the laning stage, try to secure a triangle. I, I see what, one, two observer, set, sorry, center wards in the radiant triangle but would want to see an observer ward. There's a hawk scouting them out. Bottom, KP spotted, goes to the ult once again. Do they have the damage? Looks like it. Whoa! Oh, that was close. It's the wand quite was a lot enough. of damage. It's a budget E Blade build. You pick Pagna and the Grim Stroke, so you don't have to farm that Ethereal Blade. Swashbuckle away, disarm, now silence, no roll. 
And they'll get another. Tim's ends up dead. Gabby shows up. Not sure he wants to be there, or does he? Static Storm's a miss with the kinetic field. And now Gabby really unsure about how much he wants to fight this. Goes to the man to the Primal Roar. Is used a lot of damage on a Cuckoo. Missed the Primal Roar. They buy back on the Pangolier. They lose themselves the Disruptor. And Zephyr, he's been caught searing chains. Right click damage from Gabby. Oh, one second till he's dead. And there's the slight Zephyr gun. Uh, there's not enough damage for TNC to go inside a pit to take the Roche, but th there is enough damage to try to take a tier 1 tower on a mid lane. T1, <laughs> yeah, just faking it. Ha 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 I was thinking the same thing. It's Still, Pangolier's laugh, the best one. We'll hear it soon, hopefully. He needs to do something, except for the buyback, so that we can hear it. Maybe after a after a buyback, you're not no, gonna be able to do it. many stuff. So he's got seventeen hundred gold. Probably going for what the blink dagger, you'd say. Most likely, yeah. Just uh, the positioning. They lack the initiator. Like you don't get that from the underlord. So yeah, mid laners okay-ish. Try to set things up with the searing chains, but rolling in the back line, trying to find the grim stroke possibly, and the crystal maiden take them out. More also a Pagna, so they have one four staff on Pagna, which is gonna help quite a lot against the, the searing chains where they try to focus. A bit of malice, Rod of Atos, just push them out of the focus. Carl coming over, KP TPing out. Doesn't spot him until it's too late. And Gabby's still working on the Scotty. He's doing a good job. He's one component of gold of, of the way there. Yeah, I think this game, his build should be Scotty into MKB. So you have that uh, something and then into a BKB. We'll see how things are going to work out for him. Didn't die for a very long time, so should be okay. Getting that Scotty online, tank up himself and the illusions. Ink swell looking for the Pango. Got to remember, he just bought back. Freezing field, the damage is there. Now gone for 70. <laughs> So we definitely won't hear that laugh for a little while. And on top of that, Jackie had killed the Disruptor pretty easily prior to that. They don't go into Roche just yet. Jackie working on the BKB. They do ping him out, though. So here's their time. They have more than enough damage. They know Pango does not have a buyback. This is their team fight. Minus armor from the Deso, Beastmaster Aura. Like the Roshan dies in 10 to 15 seconds. One for a second. And there's the Aegis for Jackie. So first Roche into the hands of T1. No contest there from TNC, as you know. The Terra Blade is looking for the Scotty. They're trying to build up these items so they feel confident enough to fight. Uh, it's very tough for TNC still, but they're waiting for their moment to finally be able to keep up, I'd say, with T1 at times. And, well, they don't want to compete against them going into this Roche pit as it could put them even further behind if they lose that fight. Now T1 needs to start putting some more pressure. Oh Roar is available. That's their stun. Great combination with the Grimstroke. But Grimstroke just wants to get a Blink Dagger for himself to be able to execute the combo much easier. Still a long way until he can farm that Phantom Assassin working towards the Basher. BKB is done. Just needs to use the Courier. Here's that BKB coming out. Big power spike here Radiant for T1, specifically for Jackie in these fights. We'll have to see how the Terra Blade handles this. The tier two dropping pretty easily. Again, TNC don't want to fight into this Aegis. They'll probably maneuver themselves around the map, especially until the Terra Blade gets that Scott E to a point where they avoid fighting T1 as best they can. I don't think T1 is stopping. They understand they have so much advantage it it says 5k but i feel like it's much more kp he's not tanky at all like there's no magic resistance coming out from this build four staff plus road of atos disarm pagna can keep them safe and healthy so they dealt uh, almost a thousand damage to the tower actually more but uh, yeah tb still trying to farm up getting closer to his scotty so broken Jackie forward on this. They also had the uh, Hawk to spot them. 
bit of malice. Thinking about the rolling thunder. There's a the rod of Atos. Four staff glimpse all coming through. Kinetic field. Soulbind backs off and now leashes up to the Underlord. They don't get that kill onto Jackie. Though. All that used and don't even pop the Aegis. They're just buying time for TB. T1 respecting the Firestorm damage that's coming out from it. Yeah. Bit of Malice maxed out, Road of Atos, Kinetic Field, a lot of circles to keep them in place while Firestorm deals the damage. Also, Amber Spirit with the chains could set things up so they don't still feel comfortable going high ground right away. Afraid of the buybacks. Pango Leader doesn't have that Blink Dagger yet. Pango very poor. Yeah, he really hasn't been able to accomplish much and you can see where he is in uh, terms of net worth sitting well behind the Crystal Maiden. About 2k. It, it's pretty crazy how much farm this uh, Zephyr Crystal Maiden has acquired going into the BKB. So about 2,500 gold away for that. Oh, good timing from T1. Three people trying to get back their outposts should catch at least one. Now we'll go for the Disruptor and Febby turn. Okay. Armel, Gabby, and KP will Dark Rift away. Okay, so Carl also has a four staff. I can understand why you want to have that item when you're playing against the Underlord. Try to push someone out when they're using the Dark Rift. Could be pretty big play. Be a high IQ play if, I, if we get to see it. I don't know if I've seen many successes with something like that. Oh, you have to drive. It's really tough, the timing to get it right, knowing where somebody's going to be. And I think you kind of saw that from TNC because they were hugging KP as tight as they could, trying to stay in the center of that circle. So, Terrorblade going MKB Ags. I'm a big Ags fan on TV. I think that fear is really good, especially... Also, the 10 seconds of metamorphosis you get with it, too. It's a great Ags upgrade, for sure. Definitely needs MKB before that to be able to deal with the evasion coming out from the Phantom Assassin. Like, look at the damage. It's just chains. Mm, trying to get oh. Jackie. Thunderstrike is maxed Aegis out. is going to be reclaimed in 8 seconds. They need to be careful on the timings for this. Firestorm is such an awesome spell if you have any kind of setup, and uh, this time they do. Chains, Kinetic Field, also he built the Road of Atos for himself. On top of that, you've got Armel pressuring top. The Tier 3 takes 30 damage, but he is knocking on the door, making T1 aware. I don't think I've ever seen similar item build from an Underlord. Usually want to have something the tank up, very limited on the armor. Like, if he decides to go for that Ghost Scepter, you're just thinking about yourself. You can't cast that on allies. So, I think Lotus Orb would be much better. Bounce back, let's say, the Primal Roar, the, remove the Decrypify, great against the Soulbind. Spider Legs, a good pick up there. I like that neutral item. Jackie moving over. They've got a Paladin Sword. Orb of Destruction for TNC. And TB on this Ags. Or on, the, on this MKB. He's got the Demon Edge. Has enough for the Javelin. So just needs 1,600 more gold. And then I, I at least think TNC can certainly hold their high ground. They sure can. With the buybacks. With the Firestorm. Bit of Malice. One of the best defenses in the game what t1 is trying to do possibly get a pick off wait for the second roche they are the ones who are controlling the map with the hawks with the division coming out from the necro units double damage they're keeping that for phantom assassin they even gave her a bottle Radiant such a bro scan. thing to do yeah, always good to lift up your bro especially if they're you know in a bad spot, maybe lacking some ja damage. Yeah, I gotta take care of bros. Yeah. Top lane, Tim's, he'll get out, rolling thunder. Carl will just tip him. 
Febby. Not much to his name. Oh, God, the Bash is coming in with the double damage. Jackie just rips through the Underlord. Catching KP, a little bit of sweep at the wheel. And they get the kill onto the Underlord, dead for 40 seconds, with Roche potentially spawning in 30. MKB finished in 500 gold for Gabby. He needs to get there. And then maybe they can fight into this, but for now, T1, it feels like they control their own destiny at the moment. That's why I said Underlord is not really tanky. We could see, I mean, it, it was double damage. Phantom Assassin yeah. dies in three, four hits. That's why I would love Lotus Orb, something that gives you armor. Ghost Scepter just gives you five stats, that's all. I mean, there's a difference in the cost of these two items, but uh, for a reason. So, MKB is getting delivered to Gabby. Ag's next. Top tier one goes down. T1 putting the pressure on to the tier two. So Cuckoo will hold on to the spider legs. He's got four staff hood as well as the Necro three. Jackie's just waiting here, looking for an opportunity, trying to finish off this Abyssal Blade. He's really quite farmed, but TB has kept up since he's been able to uh, recover after the early game. TB didn't die for the 20 minutes. Yeah. These are just deaths from the laning stage, those three. And now he keeps farming, so T1 just playing it safe. Wait for the next rose to respawn. There's Disruptor Courier inside a pit. There's also a Hawk, so they will see it when it scouts out uh, when it spawns. So TNC uses a smoke because they don't know the timer on the Roshan. They don't know if it's up or not. Stifling Dagger on an illusion, critting for 1300. One dagger and I'm dead. We'll see if that phrase does hold true. This smoke, it, it puts them towards the mid lane, but it hasn't exactly put them next to the Roche Pit or into a fight just yet. And now there's a smoke from T1. They're doing the same exact thing from the other side. Carl, he gets spotted by the illusion. Let's see if they jump forward. They do KP from half to dead. Whoa, Jackie with the damage. Didn't even need the Abyssal Blade for that one. It's just too much damage. Yeah. He is not tanky at all. Has buyback available. He also went for Aether Lens, which is very weird. Oh, and so Jackie is just shot. ripping them apart right now. It's never fun playing an under farm support against the Phantom Assassin that's got a lot. Get buyback into the Metamorphosis. They've got the stun on the Phantom Assassin. It might be even too deep. Jackie's dead. No buyback. Cuckoo looking next, but the Soulbind. Double oh, roar, but it's the defensive ember. one. That keeps Cuckoo alive. Swashbuckle and then BKB from Zephyr. They all leave. And that's Roche a great a second. respawn time for TNC. Tims blinks in. He'll spot it. That's going to get banged out. Two Not buybacks okay. instantly. They were waiting for that. Phantom Assassin's like, yeah, I cannot die. I just killed two heroes. We can take the fight. Three versus five, no problem. But this MKB piercing through the evasion is just a bit too much. Like, TB is a hero that is transformation. Usually you don't give it to the transformation heroes. Here it's fine because he right. still deals ton of right-click damage with the reflection to slow them down. So all good here. He's actually going into the BKB next, not the Ags. I, I kind of like I, that more. Yeah. BKB is a safer choice, allows you to... Just stand your ground and fight. Uh, you have one defensive tool, that's Manta style. You can't get rid of like the Phantom, kill him fast enough, uh, root, uh, the Cryptify. The Cryptify is pretty much the biggest problem. I still do like that Ags though, if he gets that after sure, the BKB. Sure. It, it's, it's a great upgrade for yeah. sure. I think that 10 second Metamorphosis is so underlooked at times. I think some teams kind of like. You know, boots, then, ags, rush, right? <laughs> you could. Uh, you might get yelled at for it. I was going to say, sometimes, like, it's like that first fight where Jug has ags. If you haven't checked his items, he's swift slash. He thinks he's on, you think he's Omni, Omni do, but, like, he uses. You realize. Yeah. You if know, you haven't that checked it's his items. Not the big one doesn't yeah. last long enough. 
Maybe you get a little bit baited by that. Potentially the meta 10 second metamorphosis baits you as well. Not sure what this uh, Eater Lens is for. Like, increase the cast range on the Road of Atos. Bit of Malice. Jackie coming in Femi with BKB. Just straight up dead. Roll up. They got the kill of Femi very quickly. They'll take out Tim's and all oh, the cheese just keeps the Underlord alive and allows them to leave via the Dark Rift. I love the aggression from T1 where they are playing into Aegis and Cheese, still getting the kills. They understand they use two buybacks. If they can somehow kill the Underlord, that would be pretty big and uh, I feel T1 could still fight if they manage to kill the Underlord, four versus five, even though there's still Aegis on TB, you know, take that fight. T1 just feels very strong at the moment, but they're also respecting the damage coming out from the Terror Blade. Right. Now the damage certainly felt uh, caused Jackie to go down in that fight that led to them picking up the Aegis on TNC. The BKB now down to nine seconds for Phantom Assassin, about to pick up that Ags. That's mostly because you want to have a way of dispelling things, not to refresh your abilities. Against the Thunderstrike, against the Root Mechanics, that's really great. This arm from Pango, Reflection, a lot of value from that Blur upgraded from the Ags. Looks uh, really good. Also getting close to level 25, so it's going to help quite a lot with dealing more damage. And yeah, we'll see um, if the Thunderstrikes are... Also, just strictly put onto the Terror Blade. I'm really, Febby hasn't had many opportunities to get more than one out. The second he ends up throwing a uh, Thunderstrike, <laughs> he's pretty much dead to the PA in one shot. He's like, oh, I did something. I'm dead. I'm 9 and 5. This is my game right now. But uh, as is always the story with an under-farmed 5 against the Phantom Assassin, who is... Uh, pretty far ahead. Now she's massive right now, but uh, so is TB. Has that BKB done. And as you mentioned, like Falcon Blade, that item will be replaced soon. Already yeah, in the backpack. Space in the backpack. When, when do we get more backpack slots? I think three is pretty enough. Remember when you could use four neutral items? <laughs> Like Haskar, good old times. When supports weren't allowed to have neutral items. They'd all go to your cores. Fun times to be a support. T1 coming around. Gabby. Still working on this tower. They'll grab it. Yeah, supports these days can't really complain. Because back in my days, you know, you needed to have TP slot. Observer slot, center ward slot, they, they were not combined. Then you need to have boost, a boots, possibly a dust, and a magic one. Like, th this was your life. You had to walk up lane, uphill, both ways, in the snow. No shoes on. Yeah. Guys got to remember that. It's very close to... Young Crystal Maiden's life. Timeless Relic dropped for both, both teams. teams. Oh. I guess you just give it to Pugna. Underlord's holding the other one. Oh, it's great on Underlord. Longer Jackie. pit of Malice duration, longer Road of Atos. Just feels great to have. Pugna, however, on the other side, more magic damage coming out from Dagon. Longer to Crypify. Just feels good. I'm still hoping for the shard. Ooh, Telescope and Hex coming in for the Beastmaster. Beastmaster's wow. actually super farmed. Yeah, he's got 1,500, or 15,000 gold. You get double the value from this Hex because you have a Grimstroke. Yeah. Soulbind items. This Underward, less farm than Zephyr on the Crystal Maiden. But that's where a lot of the net worth lead comes in, right? Is Crystal Maiden to the Pango and the Beastmaster to the Underward, like, your one and two are still keeping pace. Yeah, they're very close. And no the big wow. difference is Disruptor being really poor, Crystal Maiden, 3,000 gold, that's like one item ahead of a Pangolier. He has E on disc now. He's been getting popped. Going into the Shard next. Looking to roll up. 
and I believe, yeah, Basher was picked up for the TB. He's got a double damage bottle. They're going for the Phantom Assassin. Pops the BKB. Soulbind was used. There's the Remnant forward side of the Searing Chains come through, and his White Mon dies. Jackie's already used the BKB. It's about to run out in just a second. Where are we going the other way? But the Pit of Malice, it hits him. They've got the Static Storm. No BKB. A lot of trouble for Jackie and oh, Abyssal Blade to try and get out. <laughs> just cleave kill. <laughs> Femi. Uh, Femi's like, man, why is this there? happening to me? Like, uh, I, I was not supposed to die. But yeah, TB double damage, what is that? Uh, 600 plus, almost 700 damage on the hero. Not too bad. <laughs> Fabi was like, I'm finally going to survive a fight. And then just gets cleaved. How much did he just get cleaved for? Oh my god, Fabi having a rough one. Oh, Ooh. that's a lot of damage from Pagna. Yeah. Take out... That ward. Okay. And Sunday. When this timeless relic actually extra fifteen percent spell damage, the cryptify plus blast, they gonna combo. So there's a tome Grimstroke trying to get to eighteen. Have that extra soul bind duration and the cast range on it. Oh, they found themselves KP again. Man, he just feels like he cannot survive many interactions. And Zephyr going for Febby. Febby just minding his own business Maybe here. Maybe use a BKB. He wants Febby. That's, he wants yeah. him hard. He <laughs> wants him bad. Yeah, and they get him. So Pagna. Dragon 5, wow. Surprised that Underlord, once again, didn't go for Hood this game. There's a ton of magical damage. Pagna, Grimstroke, Crystal Maiden. Not a single, like, real defensive tanky item. No Crimson, no Vanguard, just the, you know, the casual plate mail that he has right now. I don't think you get a lot of value from this Aether Lens, to be honest. Uh, kind of interesting to have that Aether Lens. If you're defending the base, with Aetherlands, using a bit of Malice, Firestorm from far away, then you get something from the yeah. item. But if you're outside of the base, you're kind of, man, I wish I had something else. Yeah, for sure. It, it just does not feel like he's survivor, survivable in many interactions, like I've been saying, and like you've been saying too. He seems to soak up damage, but just because he's soaking it doesn't mean he survives it. And many times we've seen him die in two, three shots from just, you know, the, the Dagon or yeah, the crit. At least he did go for that Ghost Scepter instead of getting that Lotus Orb I talked about so you can bounce back the spells. This Roshan dies pretty quickly. It's Cheese Refresher and Ooh, Aegis, dude. of course. They know this is going on. They have Rolling Thunder. They need to check. Armel needs to go forward, but he ran its back. <gasps> Aegis for free. Refresher Shard for Cuckoo, he'll pop the Minotaur Horn. And they just get that for free. I'm surprised that TNC just let that go. Free Roshan, always feels good. Uh-oh, Gabby's holding a flicker. Right, here We've comes seen some real... fun interactions yesterday in Chinese regions where flicker just refused to work properly. I mean, yeah, it blinks you, but always the wrong way where you want to go. This game, I think it's really good, removing the slows, silences. Most likely, you just want to dodge combo from Pagna with the Decrypify, and Pagna hit level 25, so Nether Blast damage brings it to almost full 500. T1. We didn't have a team fight for a little like while. 20 minutes, right? Uh, there was a one, there. you know, one hero died. Uh, they Febby got the kill was, on to uh, the Phantom Assassin. Yeah, and Febby died. Uh, didn't even cleave. want it to die. Just casualty of war. Casualty of standing too close. Bottom tier three getting pressured by these creeps once again from the Radiant side. 
Ooh, Searing Chain. Zephyr pops the BKB, but there's the Abyssal. Gabby. Gabby's the mad. He's like, ah, I'm getting this maiden. You know, she caused me a lot of issues, a lot of pain in the laning stage. I'm getting back to her. I see Heart of Tarask. So, wants to be able to tank up the illusions. Extra cast range now for the Disruptor. Breathing a sigh of relief that maybe, just maybe, he can sit a little bit further back and not die. But here's hoping. He's One got his can fingers only crossed. Hope. Phantom Assassin, double damage in the bottle. Let's see who they find, KP. Jackie, KP, crits coming in. And Gabby with the damage, they go after Jackie. Oh, did he get away? No. What Aegis. is this damage from Terror Blade? <laughs> it's gone. Now the Soul by BKB, but he's got the Abyssal. They're going for the kill on a Jackie who will Phantom Strike away. Rolling Thunder hits on a Cuckoo. Armel with the BKB trying to chase, trying to find a target here. Static Storm, they got the glimpse, they've got Jackie! Femi getting it done! Gabby's got the kill! Oh, and now, oh man, chain. God, getting both BKBs out. It's actually the Minotaur Horn from Cuckoo. The right clicks from Gabby. Nobody can oh, beat this terribly. The bash is in. Oh, oh they, man. They, bang. they know. First hit bash from Thims. Uh, now they're going for the high ground. Man, this damage from the Terror Blade is actually insane. Phantom Assassin so just doesn't hard. feel like a hero. No, got caught twice and just melted. Buybacks from both the Pugna as well as the Beastmaster. The Glyph right away, and well, terribly, has got 8,000 gold to work with. He's thinking about what he wants. Soulbind Silence, Hex comes in onto the TB as well as this Ember Spirit. They go the Primal Roar to follow it up. They get the kill on RML. They will go for the TB. Silence, he can't get Hex it off. again, and Gabby's gone. That's the combo, like double. Roar, double Decrypify, double Dagon, and the Hex afterwards to finish it off. I like how Jackie was, you know, I'm good, I'm not buying back. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm not buying back is because I don't have enough gold. I'm just watching my team do the rest. Carry who needs them. Don't need the Phantom Assassin to get those two kills. Amazing I want to see what Terrorblade's uh, item is going to be. It's still hard queued up, but uh, probably thinking, is there a better choice? Is there something that's going to keep me alive? A Lotus Orb, not done yet on the Underlord. I would love to see, like, a Lincoln Sphere, possibly one more, Watch maybe. Watch again. Yeah, it's just Phantoms some embrace sick hex, amount of damage. The double life drain. And then just blown up by the Nether Blast. Carl. They don't want to buy back on this TNC side. They do have Firestorm from a distance, keeping them from going onto the high ground. Phantom Assassin finally shows up again. Jackie needs to be very, very careful as we've seen him melt multiple times. And I think TNC should be willing to give up at least the set of racks as it is pretty difficult for T1 to take them. They've got the disarm. There's the Rod of Atos with the Pit of Malice. That'll claw up again. Locking him down a lot. And they finally get the melee racks, but if you're a TNC fan, that's okay. You didn't buy back on your two cores that need buyback coming into this next fight. So TB is committing, going for the heart, wants to tank up, have some kind of region extra to be able to get in and out of the fight. I, I, like, if it was the old patch, Satanic would just be the best item because it yeah. gave status resistance now it doesn't anymore and the new heart feels let's say better in every case but uh, most of the time heart just feels good so Not there's the, the lotus orb done if they manage to bounce back like a roar and possibly a soul bind that would be pretty big so they have a hex on beastmaster a hex on pugna Hex on Hex on Soulbind Hex Hex could be a big problem for TNC. But we'll see. Roche, minimum respawn, is still a little ways out. We've got level, to level 25 for Terror Blade. Level 25 really around quite a lot of these heroes. Ember, TB, Pango, 
PA Pugna, but two about to hit it for T1. Both the Crystal Maiden and the Beastmaster closing in on it. Man, Zephyr is super farmed. And I, like, I can't say it enough. And they're going for another Hex. They're going for a third Hex. So you know you're going to get like two Hexes, uh, Soulbind duration on level three is eight seconds. So you might actually, you know, just disable two heroes for a very long time. Wow. White Mon, if he gets caught here, though, I don't know. Actually, if Armel gets caught here, he's been hexed as well as the Phantom's Embrace. They've got the life drain, the damage, and the kill onto the Ember. He didn't buy back in the last fight. It means he still has it. But that is a great pickoff for T1. Yeah, 2k gold lead for them. Doesn't mean anything at this point. Uh, next Roche may respawn in 40 seconds. PA's like, I need some armor. You know, I need to tank up uh, playing into TB. He's just dismantling me. Decides to buy AC, which could backfire, you know, against the reflection. Uh, he just pops it and then uh, they have yeah. minus armor. So not that great of an item, but uh, it's going to give her some extra survivability in the team fights. So we'll see what T1 can do with this. Obviously, they're not working with Biax on the Pugna and the Beastmaster. Not enough gold for it for the PA. We'll see how comfortable they are fighting Roche. Minimum respawn time is up. And it should be a quicker Roche. As we see, we're already a fourth of the way there. So it is a quick one, which will be a big fight. Fourth Roche, Aegis Cheese, Refresher Shard, Ag's Blessing. You know TB was looking for that Ag's. Now he can just pick it up via the Blessing if they get the kill onto the Roche. And he's got it queued up here still. So an opportuni opportunity certainly for Gabby to spend that money elsewhere. Ooh, Glepnir being built by the Ember. Glepnir? Glepnir? You call it whatever you want, my friend. I'm, I'm fine with whatever. Uh, wow, why is he going Gleipnir? Maybe he thinks they need Radiant's more... Like, it's... I see a lot of Arc Warden players building that item. I'm just really not convinced by it. Where right. it just feels so underwhelming. You, you don't get the attack speed as you do from the Mjolnir. And the double Mjolnir in the fights feels much better. At least on the Arc Warden. Mm, for the Ember, though. For the Ember. Okay. Maybe he just wants to keep people in place. You know, there are BKBs... But the root people inside Firestorm, keep him in place so TB can deal the damage. Still feels there's a better item choice. Like if you want to go, you can upgrade your Ag Scepter, see how things are going to go out. Maybe you need a bit more damage. Get the Daedalus, possibly uh, get Eon Disc so you can still just get bursted. Even though you have a Lincoln Sphere, but would still prefer a bit more damage. And Glypern doesn't provide you with that much damage. Right. So, sending the Necro Creeps in as well as a boar just to scout this Roche. They also had the Hawk over there. Smoke used by TNC. And they're up here on the high ground, T1, waiting to make something happen. I don't know if you take a quick enough Roche on the side of TNC to even try to sneak this. This smoke... They pick up an Invis. They've got Armel coming back over bottom just to clean up a little bit. Something we didn't talk about is like the Pagna Timeless Relic Hex. Also, Crystal Maiden is holding a ceremonial robe, so lowering the status resistance by 10 and magic resist by 10. So, like this hex is going to last for more than 4.5 seconds, which is pretty big. Like it's Get that AoE soul status resist minus reduction. Abyssal being built there for the Pangolier. I mean, maybe they can jump these heroes. It's going to be very difficult. These hexes just seem like enough control. What do you do if you get hexed up? Grimstroke building towards the Aghanim Scepter. That's a big one. If they can get that item against the TB, like, you have Illusion that deals 150% of the damage. Magic immune. Gross. Sounds good. And you can make two of those, like TB plus one, when you use a Soulbind. Well, Dark Portrait. He's almost got it. Only a thousand gold away. And again, Ag's Blessing. 
is going to drop on the next Roche if anybody does finally take it. Seems like both these teams sitting at a bit of a stalemate as they just don't feel comfortable just yet. But as I say that, T1, this time they smoke. They're going to try and make something happen, though they're going the wrong direction right now. They might be able to wrap all the way around and find TNC coming from the back. Courier in the trees for TNC. TNC now in the river. There's an arcane rune right there. High Let's ground see. advantage for T1. They pop the, the Lincolns. They've got the Hex. They'll have the Abyssal of the Force to back. The Soulbind's out. And I think that got reflected. They've got the Soulbind onto both the Disruptor as well as the Underworld. They get the kill onto this Armel PH Ember. But melts. there's PA going down in the Static Storm. First one gone has buyback. We'll see if she uses it. Carl on the run with the BKB. The buyback comes out from the Ember. They'll take out Carl. Carl and Jackie are gone. This should be Roche with the side of TNC. They're trying to chase this Grimstroke Inkswell, but it's not going to be enough to survive with the BKB pop by Armel. And he will get the kill onto the Grimstroke. Three heroes gone on the side of T1. And Armel comes should be the one picking up that Aegis because he just he bought, bought back, back uh, Gabby. Uh, he has enough money to actually buy the... I, I think you give the, this Aghanim Scepter to Disruptor. He's far away from it, but I feel like you should give it to him because it's pretty big. Bangalier, uh, where's that axe? It's on the ground. Come on, Febby, pick it up. Febby. Pango took it. You're not allowed to have anything as a, as a position six. I mean, Bash is fine, you know, when during the Rolling Thunder, but it's much easier to set things up with the Static Storm Aghanim Scepter upgrade. And he's also not, like, going for it. Uh, Febby is just being uh, not greedy enough, I would say. Yeah. Two buybacks. Yeah, no buyback used by the Phantom Assassin just yet. Remnant forward, searing Flicker. chains. They've got the root onto this Pugna. BKB running away. They've got the leash onto the Terror Blade as well as the Ember. They're using these right clicks, trying to get something done. But there's the Primal War coming out from the Beastmaster. Roll in from Tim's Cuckoo forced to use his own BKB. There's the Freezing Field as well as the BKB. They go to the Dark Rift, but Gabby with the Abyssal Blade. They get the kill on a Zephyr. He's going to buy back immediately. And there's the Dark Rift away. Five-star Uber. Gets them all right out. So, out. yeah, three buybacks. From T1, now they have Cheese. Who's holding the refresher? Uh, terribly. TB is? Okay. <laughs> and there's the quite here. So let's take a look at this again. Zephyr goes in, immediately hit with that Abyssal. No way for him to get a full freezing field off. It was the right thought. Just not going to happen. Really tough going in right next to the TB who can stop it with that Abyssal immediately. If I was a Grimstroke here, I would just sell Magic Wand, sell a Four Staff, and uh, buy Aghanim Scepter. Go for the Dark Portrait. Go, sell everything except the Blink Dagger, and uh, you need that Dark Portrait. Uh, item recommendations? Ags? Potentially. I don't know if that showed up on your screen. Yeah, it did. It did. Not sure how is that possible. Ooh, Divine Rapier here for the Phantom Assassin. Three straight games with Divine Rapier. So far, for those people who just tuned in, Phantom Assassin lost all games so far. Trying to break the curse. Not turn into Spectre if you can't break that curse. Wind Waker being built for the Pangolier. So, we'll see how this game will conclude potentially soon because it's my favorite point in the game we're right around the tier fives <laughs> can't believe this time to talk about it game has been going on for 57 minutes db pops the meta Hex look at that picked range up for the crystal maiden yeah look at the range coming flicker. in life nice. drain flicker putting him in a better position having better luck right now than erica flicker did yesterday available again flicker still not hurting him it's a risky game. You play too many times, you're going to get burned eventually. They've got the Hex. Now Jackie jumping in, looking for the kill onto the Terror Blade. They've got the right clicks as well as the Bass. They've got the Primal War that's going to be bounced back onto the Beastmaster. They've got the kill to Gabby. He's dead for 97 seconds without buyback. Static Storm is down. That's onto a couple of these heroes. They don't follow it up. Plus a Firestorm. B well and Jack die. <laughs> oh, Bagna with the saves. I think she would live anyway. But man, that Firestorm damage is insane. And now... Underlord, yeah. level 25, Timeless Relic. 
I know nobody's taking this, that Divine Rage Griever, that was close. This bit of malice, close. like, it's just insane. Disable duration 2.45, uh, and then you add Timeless Relic on top of that. So you're, like, almost perma-rooted. Gabby Gabby needs to be careful. Yeah, hexed, stunned, and then just the damage coming in. They bounce back to have Primal Roar. And then look at that Crystal Maiden dropping Thunderstrike, Firestorm, Static Storm, or Thunderstrike, not Thunderstorm. Glimpse back on a Cuckoo, gets the Bashers from the Swashbuckle, but they've hexed up the Ember, they've got the Lotus Orb, and now Phantom's Embrace, oh god, Jackie just rips through both Bevy and KP. He's still chasing, does not have a vision, so how are we buyback-wise? DB has one, he does not want to use it, of course, because about to respawn, Ember doesn't have one, so he should be very careful, still ages for another 20 seconds. Man, this this game could go either way. Like, Still doesn't matter the tier network fives. lead. And finally, Grimstroke finds that the gold, gets Dark the Agon Scepter, and also hits level 25, Inksfall Radius. We're actually getting closer to level 30 on some heroes. Oh, Phantom yeah. Assassin, very close. How's Pagna doing? Level 28. Octarine Core, another divine queued up for the Phantom Assassin. You've got 29 for the Ember, 28 for the TB. Let's see. It's time to play the lottery. Tier 5 time. Let's go. Mirror Shield, that you're already winning. Is that cheating? Maybe. 16 stats and... Uh, oh, Ballista. They don't have the good hero to carry yeah. Ballista. They're like, man, wish Mirror we had shield, a draw okay. ranger or a sniper. Mirror Shield. Do they get Ballista? <laughs> that would be, that would be a dope. big one. They're hoping. Both teams are searching. They get the bounty runes. Picking those up. Get that gold under their belt, holding these buybacks, looking, searching, trying to get something to drop. You need to be very careful how you're using your spells. There's like Lincoln Sphere, Lotus Orb, Mirror Shield available on the Ember Spirit. Oh, Deso too. Desolator. All right, she'll take that one. It actually stacks with the Dezo, which is pretty insane. We, that is so far T1. I know Ballista doesn't work for the team. But that's always like. That's a good one, I feel like. Oh, Book of the Forest Dead and boots. Forest Boots. See, like, you know, that or Stage and Desolator. Uh, it feels like the lottery. Uh, Book the of the world, Dead. The so he decides to get the Forest Boots. It's also a Dispel, which is nice. Double the cooldown of a Flicker, but still okay-ish. Book of the Dead. I just feel like that item is a bit uh, underwhelming. Fallen oh, sky. that's a good one. That it's is like the final one. Like, you can just uh, initiate with the Fallen Sky. Let's see who's going to take that one. I guess you just give it to Pango. He's holding a Stormcrafter for now. You'd expect it, right? He's still holding that uh, Stormcrafter, though. Mirror Shield for the Pugna. Minotaur Horn with the BKB available for the Beastmaster. Divine, or a second one being they built for the Phantom Assassin. Two tier five items on side of T1, I think. They got Ballista, oh, they got Desolator, Ballista. and Mirror Shield. Yeah, There's no one wants that sky. Ballista. Not much use of the item. Radiant will take it. Somebody wants it. So yeah, Pango has the Fallen Sky. One of the coolest items in the game, for sure. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, just, you know, have an ability to transform into Meteor. <laughs> It was pretty cool. Oh, God. Stifling daggers coming out and just obliterating creep waves. Creeps around the world have shuddered in fear. Wind Waker almost for the Pangolier. That is a lot of gold saved up. He's not. He doesn't have a Yules already. He's building the whole thing. Straight into it. <laughs> yeah. Thousand gold till the... Double Divine for the Phantom Assassin, who is now level 30. All the talents. They have been unlocked. Ember's almost got 30. Underlord's going for huh, E-Blade. I, I don't think you can use E-Blade successfully enough. Maybe after PA uses a BKB, then you use it Honor, but it's it's going to be tough. I would prefer Lincoln's fight. Oh, here they go. They're going for the Terrorblade. They're trying to get the kill. Oh, Gabby just blown up. 
Tims with the rolling thunder. They've got the life drain onto the ember. All they got so far is Gabby. They're trying to dark wave away or thinking about going out of this one. Tims comes in with the rolling thunder and they're gone. So TB gone. Still has buyback, of course. Didn't uh, use it uh, for a very long time. Oh, man, terribly got nothing off. Now, he also bought the shard upgrade, the demon seal. Which that... gives, yeah, it gives Good. him more move speed and more attack speed. Oh, another Roche. Ooh, this is really good for T1. Axe Blessing. Axe Blessing. Uh, maybe you give it a Pagna. Pugna. Pagna's taking it. Uh, Crystal Maiden wouldn't be too bad of a choice. No, now you get the shard, and then the ultimate suck is possible. I don't think you need a shard. It's no, just, you know, it just doesn't uh, feel that here. great Ooh, at this giant point. Giant There's the one. Ooh. Uh, you, get, you give it to Beastmaster, I think. Who's taking the giant's ring? There it is. Look how big Beastmaster is. Really does look like a beast now. Very balanced. Look at him. Walking over the cliffs. Not sure why that is a thing, but uh, okay. Just going to say T1 really made out well with their, their tier fives. Because they found Ballista. They're like, what do we need? Okay, giant's ring. We'll take that one. Yeah. They uh, asked their lo local fortune teller. What they'd get, and they got giants, right? Well, roll the dice. We didn't mention shard upgrade on the Beastmaster, which is uh, a cool one. Not because of the bomb dive, but oh because you can your micro hawks. your uh, hawk, so that's a pretty big deal. Disruptor's getting close to 25. There's the Wind Waker. Maybe save the TB. That's, you know. The point of contention. That's what who you want to be saving. Even with all that, the Ag's Blessing and the Roche taken and everything, TNC are still holding a lead. And by the way, it seems like TB's been 28 forever. Yeah, he's just been just farming with the illusions, not getting too much XP. Uh, Shard also on the Disruptor. Thunderstrike can be cast on allies. Also gives 50% uh, move speed and 75 attack speed. So they want to pop everything on TB. Like, look at him. Look at him go. Uh, KP, pretty far forward. Pit of Malice. Gabby nearby. He needs to be careful. Gets spotted. So I'll take out those Necro Creeps. But T1, they're nearby. Throw those axes. Spot the illusion. Cuckoo just... Giant's ring, free movement, very balanced. Look at this <laughs> reflection. reflection. Yeah, didn't know that's a thing, but apparently it is. It would have been funnier if it was normal size. No, use this hawk. They're gonna get vision. They'll see the entire side of TNC. So an opportunity for T1 to really jump the high ground and surprise them. They're spread out. Jackie just in viz stifling daggers come in, so they know exactly where he is. Gabby over to the side. Firestorm to keep T1 away. They're trying their darnest to wait out this Aegis. Buybacks. Everybody but Pango and Grimstroke. At this point, like Firestorm deals ton of damage. You just need to survive through initial burst, uh, keep them in place, use it multiple times. There's one Eon Disc on the Underlord, one on the Disruptor, and one on Pangolier. So three Eon Disc. Let's see how many do they have. One on Pagna. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it on the dire side. This is another one of those games where I just think Ags on the Disruptor makes such a big it's, it's difference. A, it's a huge difference. Like, I, I th that's just me. I'd sell Glimmer Cape by Aghanim Scepter straight away. I can understand yeah. that uh, he's holding a buyback right now. But he's got Refresher. If you can get him both down, the, you're this doing is so just, much uh, in the fight. Too much, you know ignoring the items you can't pop a bkb you can't hex firestorm on top of both of those or on top of one like uh, he's getting the gold uh with the book of the dead yeah so that's pretty cool has almost hex enough gold comes for through it. 
Inkswell. Now they go after KP. That's going to be the end. Just pop. They've got the Static Storm. GKB that gets popped. Cheese is eaten. They're trying to go after Jackie with the Rolling Thunder coming through. The BKB is no longer going to last on to Jackie. They've got him glimpsed back right into the hands of Gabby. They have the damage to get the kill into the Phantom Assassin. Yes, they do with a Pit of Mouse right down on him. They've got him locked in the Pit of Mouse. The Aegis is going to be used. So can they get a second kill into the Phantom Assassin with the BKB being popped by Cuckoo? They've got the Hex on to Gabby, but it's not going to be enough. The right click damage coming out of the BA. They've got the Divine Rapier now dropped on the deck. Can they pick it up? They look over at Cuckoo with the BKB. He's trying to run, but he's bad dropping Gale. Three heroes got on the side of T1. The only ones to get away are Grimstroke and this Crystal Maiden. And they bought back on the Ember just like that TNC. They've got control of the Divine Rapier, control of the game, and looking like they might be able to pull out the series. So TB is holding a Divine Rapier. Uh, he says, screw Monkey King Bard. I'm going to have True Strike coming up from that Divine Rapier. Uh, Phantom Assassin has enough goal to actually buy a new divine rapier yeah it's there not sure if he has enough money to actually buy rapier and the buyback at this point the buybacks are very costly let's see the buybacks i mean you probably need to buy back here because they will go they will hit your buildings even with the aegis unable to survive two cheeses on the phantom assassin buybacks get used there's the fear pushing back two heroes Gets that extra 10 seconds of the metamorphosis. And now there's the glyph rolling thunder coming through. Tim's like a train rolling in without the brakes. Swashbuckle away. They've got the dark portrait chasing after these heroes. Gabby will work on that. Gets a first hit bash. will take care of it pretty easily. 22 seconds until PA is up. PA will come up and then buy the Divine back. Rapier. Oh, uh, BKBs and oh. dark rift away. So they just leap. They got the melee barracks, they leave Aghanim Scepter finally done on a Disruptor. He, I believe he used a Refresher in the previous fight because I can't see it. Yeah. This will come in handy. It's a big game changer. Like, yeah. casting it, uh, let's say, on a Phantom Assassin, they have no saves for PA besides, like, uh, a Decrypify. But, you know, even if you get a Static Storm off, she can use a BKB. She's going to melt the Static Storm and possibly Firestorm. Do you like the Kinetic Field duration or the Glimpse cooldown? Because he took the Kinetic Field my, uh, plus three, but didn't take yeah, the Glimpse minus Yeah, for sure. Eight. Like, when you have this ulti, the late game, uh, you don't get that much from the Glimpse cooldown. Right. <laughs> so now... Divine Rapier in the hands of Terrorblade has those force boots. MKB refresh your orb and bots too. And you're nine slotted on Gabby. Still has buyback. Like you have a shard, you have Agonim Scepter upgrade. 11 uh, slotted, really? He can actually get one more item that's a moon shard. Get the full 12. The dozen. They're going Smoke's in. going to be broken. They'll drop down the Pit of Malice. Now they'll look over the Swashbuckle. That's going to miss. T1, by the skin of their teeth, evade TNC. BA rebought a Rapier. Man, she deals a sick amount of damage, but so does TB at this point. Yeah, and it's really just been the ability to catch this Phantom Assassin. It's always the glimpse into the Static Storm and then the Abyssal right on top. They've been able to pop that Aegis every time the Phantom Assassin has had it very quickly in these fights. Late game Dota is just chaotic. You know, one mistake uh, could make a lot of a difference. Uh, you know, Do these know items like a Wind Waker, uh, you can save allies, like yeah. new shard upgrades, DB. Like, there, there's going to be so much attack speed when he uses Demon Zeal. Disruptor uses uh, Thunder Strike on him, right. which is a shard upgrade. So Disruptor could start thinking about getting the Aghanims for himself for now, just saving a buyback. His buyback cost is, uh, like, around 2,000, but should be okay. God, TB has 61,000 net worth. <laughs> That's such a big number. Oh, my. Get the Moon Shard, please. I want to see how high that number can go. His buyback is <laughs> 5,300. <laughs> so much. And he still can almost afford the uh, the first Hyperstone. He, he needs to be able to afford both. Oh, my God. Honestly, ridiculous. And we're going to get down to potentially, what, six Roche? I stopped counting after... Okay. Fifth, I believe, but yeah, I think I this think is gonna six. be a sixth Roche. And if we don't know how to count, just blame it on NA, because that's my counting skills.
where they come from. That's what we do. Yeah, so Roche back up, T1 postured on this. They need to be careful, though, because TNC, they're knocking on the door, looking ready to go on the base. You're by Roche, but that's the sound of TNC right by your steps. At this point of the game, I'd say Mega Creeps don't matter. Like, you just need to win Remnant two team fights in a row. That misses, but the Remnant's still searching, looking, trying to catch this Beastmaster Slide of Fist. That lands on a Cuckoo for a second. Now they've got the Gletnir forcing out the BKB. Oh, can he stop it? Yes, Abyssal. they can. Yes, There's they the Abyssal, can. and they'll get the kill on the Beastmaster. He bought back two minutes without Cuckoo. Ooh, man, that's not a place to be. Cuckoo, they needed that roar. They need that second sight. He's also like getting a day gun. He doesn't know what to buy anymore. He's out of ideas. And by the way, Pango 30, Ember 30. By the way, Ooh. Roche respawned. <laughs> Do they go back and take it? It's a possibility, but... Oh, uh... Carl. Sorry, forward staff, fake hype. Apologize. Amber can still pick it up because his buyback is on cooldown. Now they're going in. They'll use the Abyssal Blade. They're trying to get the kill into the Terror Blade. He's Whoa, solo. He's, he's gone. Dead. Divine Rapier on the deck once again. And now it's looking like the BKB's been popped by the Amber, but he's locked with the Soul Vine. Phantom There's Assassin might not get into She's it. Dead. Jackie's gone. She doesn't have buyback. enough money for buyback. Oh, dear. They've got the Shield Crash right on top of the Grimstroke. And it's going to be popped here by Tim's. But Gabby uh, back game. into the they, fight. They have no damage, B Cup. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm, hexes. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. They can maybe slow this down. Not sure how long they can. It's only 300 gold away for the Phantom Assassin. If they can get something, maybe the buyback will be there. But it's not looking likely. There they go after the tier fours. There's the ink swell. Thunderstrike. Tim's going in, but he's going to die. The life drain is enough. They pop the Lincolns. Carl on the run. They catch up with this Pugna. Survives life drain. Still up. BKB. Carl on the run. Slight's not going to be enough. Life drain again. Eventually, Pugna makes it back inside the base. KP now needing to run out of here. It's but time to hit the throne. There's the like, tier just fours. ignore the heroes. Hit the throne with all the illusions. Yeah. Take the game. There it take is. Take the victory TNC home. There it is. We'll take the game. They'll take the series over T1. A very close 75 minute game. Back and forth. It was anybody's game for the last, what, 40 minutes?